I thought I was going to talk to a not very technical audience, but here I see a very technical audience. Who considers himself very technical? Raise your hand. Okie doke. Uh, so I'm going to modify it on the fly, if you don't mind. Hmm? And, then, and forgive me if I, if I jump from, from here there, uh, because otherwise I, you'll just hear things that you, you have been knowing for years. Um, okay, so um, what I wanted to... I, okay, the title of the, this, this presentation was Cyber Weapons. Um, so what I'm going to do is start with Cyber Weapons and probably tell you things that you know already very, very much. Um, I will um, mention a little bit the economic problem that's behind this proliferation. This, this actually, actually the, the, the fact that, 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 that the situation is changing at societal level and economic level. And then I will dig a little bit more into detection, which I hope is the thing that technical people can interest the most. And, and, um, and I will do that as a, as, as a professor. And professor doesn't have solution, he has problems. So I'm, I'm afraid, <laughs> I'm really gonna, not gonna answer much of your questions. Uh, but I'm, I'm gonna, I, I, we, we are now, uh, I'm now doing research in the effectiveness of, 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 of detection methods and I'm, I'm, I'm getting to see things that I was not seeing before. Okay, let's start with the cyber weapons. Um, well, you, uh, this, this comes from Madison Gurka, who are the, the, the artists of social engineering. And social engineering is one of the ways to get your foot in. Once you got your foot in, it's, it's easy. Or, well, then it's, it's a different art to, to, to make sure that you stay there and that you get the, the information out. But to show how, how uh, social engineering is almost impossible to stop, well, this is the best example we could, we could ask for. Um, Cryptography is he's, he's a legend in cryptography, Jean-Jacques Iscatel, um, and uh, uh, he he was victim of a well-crafted uh, uh, targeted attack. He clicked on a link on an email, which we say, hey, yeah, you, you you must not do that. But that email was coming from someone, was allegedly coming from someone he knew, was talking about things he he was aware of. I mean, there is some kind of uh, regular espionage. They found out who his friends was, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then they, 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 he trapped her in. And so what I'm saying is that if he Click, click, clicked on that link, then I'm probably going to click on the link again as well in the moment that the NSA is going to craft a nice email in my direction. So we cannot expect to stop these kind of attacks where in the moment that they, they, they get in. And, um, and, 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 and you probably all know how, how, how I mean, this, this whole session is about cyber espionage and cyber weapons. And you probably are all aware how, how this, how, how the mechanism works of, of this, of these weapons. The first, penetrate by, by, by having you click on the link or by using a USB stick, by using, using some kind of, of penetration method. Then they settle. Huh? They, 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 they sit down, they look around, they find out where they are, they find out whether to have to propagate, et cetera, et cetera. When they have settled, then they start transferring information to the command and control setter. And if you catch them in one of these acts, and usually you catch them, when you catch them, if you catch them, then you, you probably catch them when, when they start communicating with, to the command and control system. That's, that's the more, most apparent part of this, this the, the most visible part of this, of this, of this all. Uh, and then you, 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 you see someone is communicating to the outside world that he's not supposed to communicate, then you go in panic and you say, hey, that computer is infected. So you pull the plug, they understand that you've pulled the plug and they, they disappear. They, they, they wipe themselves out, they put themselves in a seed and the seed will appear a few months later. Huh? This is, was exactly how Stuxnet used to work. It used to penetrate uh, in the, in the, in the so-called the first phase. It was penetrating <coughs> the local network by using a USB stick, propagating through the local network using a Samba, um, uh, Samba vulnerability of the printer port. Then he was looking for 
for a specific uh, S7 system that had a hard-coded password. He was using the hard-coded password to get in and then eventually to, uh, do I have a laser beam here? Probably, yes, right? Yes. Uh, using the hard-coded password to get into the PLC, reprogram the PLC, and then the PLC would do something strange. Well, not explode because it was not the tactic of Stuxnet to make it explode, but to, to, to make it malfunction in such a way that the, the program, the, nu the nuclear enrichment program uh, uh, got, of Iran got slowed down. Huh? And we all know Stuxnet, we all benefit from Stuxnet, that at least it raised awareness of, of what's going on. And we all know that Stuxnet didn't come alone. And uh, there is also Duku, who was discovered in 2010. And uh, he had a very nice job, an MS Word document that was staying still there until it was, was quiet and uh, quiet enough so that he could start doing things without being noticed. And was, was, Duku was, was used part of the same platform of, of, um, of Stuxnet, and it contains, I mean, it's a gathering, it's an information gathering thing. The next to Duku, we have found also Flame, which is the biggest malware ever seen around this meg 20 megabyte of malware, uh, more complex as Stuxnet, it spread around in this region. Um, all this, all this uh, Duku Stuxnet um, um, flame, and the next we are going to see is Gauss. They all around in this. They 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 found the target, especially in the in the Middle East. And the interesting thing of flame is that it was containing well, Stuxnet was containing a lot of interesting things like for their vulnerabilities, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. One thing of play, flame that was interesting to see is that it used a very advanced MD5 collision mechanism to pretend he was a, he was a window updater. And, and, and by pretending he was a window updater, he was, was spreading himself around in, in, in the network once it was settled. And it used USB sticks, etc. Cetera, et cetera. The last one, I'm, 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 I'm going fast on this part because I'm probably telling you things that you, that you basically know already. So I'm, I'm going to concentrate on the more technical part of the one with more questions than answers. Huh? The last thing uh, we can talk about is Gauss, which was discovered two years ago and contains, uh, contains a module that is, as far as I know, is still, has still not been decrypted. So uh, we, uh, yeah. It, it contains a very, very silly things, uh, but also probably a very, in very complex module that, co that exploits a vulnerability that has probably not been detected yet, but we cannot find out what it is because it's all very, very, very well encrypted. So now you look at, uh, you look at uh, uh, Duku, uh, Staxner, Duku, Flame, and Gauss. That's a big family of, of, of Cyber weapons. I mean, these are cyber weapons. They have been developed by, probably, by the U.S. and Israel, by different teams, because at one point it, 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 it diverged. They use some, some common subroutine, but they are, and some common platform, but they are different in size and, and in use. Uh, so it probably started as, as, a, as a cooperation, U.S. Israel, and then diverged into different system. And you can say, well, hey, you guys, but these are there's nothing we can do against, against the next tax night because people there, they invest so much money and so much energy in realizing these cyber weapons. By the way, flame has allegedly also been applied by the US in order to spy on the French embassy. So they, it's not only that they use it in this area of the world. Um, okay, you can say, well, we cannot do anything about that. But the problem is that these things are becoming, uh, are becoming commodities. Stuxnet was not a commodity, but um, uh, now we see things. Uh, for instance, Operation Red October, um, who was probably not coming from the US and who uses much less uh, technologically advanced means than, uh, than Stuxnet, well, has been active at least, at least since 2007. And 
he got unnoticed until last year. And this, this is becoming part of everyday life. Well, part of everyday life, like and to see of another, of another attack from the other side. Eh? So, flames, tax, and duke, et cetera, et cetera, probably US, Israel. Red October, probably not. And uh, attack, as an attack from the other side, you, you can see Shamoon. Shamoon, who was used to, uh, to hit Saudi, Ar Saudi Aramco. Um, there are lots of rumors going on about Shamoon, but, um, but it was, was uh, Leon Panetta described as the most destructive virus ever to hit a business. They, it counts as 75% of the of the data of, of it, it cancels all the data of 75% of the computer of Saudi Aramco. So it's, it's, there's, 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 a, there's already a war going on. And unfortunately, this war is not going on only, until, uh, only between the big guys. Yeah? Also, the small guys are becoming involved. And why? Because, as I said, uh, the tools to, to do this are becoming commodity. And this is the economic problem we are facing. Uh, if, you, if you look at the research until 2010, so that was about three and a half years ago, there was basically no market for vulnerabilities. I, I, I mean, it looks like another world. No market for vulnerabilities. Now the market for vulnerabilities is huge. There are companies. Uh, the company is doing this as, 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 as their main business. The fact that there are companies doing this, um, okay, it's, it creates a situation in which the, in which the, 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 the border between the good guys and the bad guys is becoming very gray. So, uh, for instance, uh, Take a student of mine. Uh, students of mine, uh, they, they discover zero-day vulnerabilities every now and then. Hmm? Well, they discover zero-day vulnerability. What would I have done before 2010? Well, they, could, they would have had a choice between uh, setting up their own criminal business, going to a criminal and proposing to set up a criminal business, or do some kind of disclosure. And you can do the so-called responsible disclosure in which you, you tell the company, the, the software, uh, the software uh, maker, hey, I found this vulnerability, and then nothing happens for months until you really put it on the ISCs and uh, on the internet, and then all of a sudden the company does something about that. But in any case, or, or he could have could looked for the publicity and say, hey, post it, immediately post it on the internet, I have found this great vulnerability. But in any case, he had to choose between doing something that at the end of the day would have, uh, would have uh, doing something criminal or doing something that at the end of the day would have led to the fixing of this vulnerability. Probably some criminality before in the, in the time between the disclosure and the patching but at the end of the day, everyone, I mean, at the end of the day, we would have had a, bit, a, a, safer, a safer system. So before 2010, there was a choice between good and bad, very clear. And now the choice between good and bad is, is, is much more difficult. Because this student of mine can go to one of these companies and, and sell this vulnerability. He doesn't have to worry about where this vulnerability is going to. It's going to a legitimate company. In this sense, it's becoming much, it's, it's, the area is becoming gray. Yes, you, you, it's, it's, it, a vulnerability is a weapon. It's a bullet. I found a bullet. I can sell it to, to, I found a weapon. I can sell it to the to the military people in 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 of either in Russia or in some, somewhere else, or 
and then I have to deal with the guys, or I can sell it to someone who does, who does the handling for me. The fact that this someone is readily available and pays a lot, by the way, makes it very difficult for, much more difficult for me to tell my students, don't do that. If you find a zero day vulnerability, go to the manufacturer, make responsible disclosure, make sure that this vulnerability is fixed. The positive side of this whole economic thing is that companies are starting to pay much more money for the disclosure of a vulnerability in the software. But it's difficult to compete against the price these guys are able to pay. I mean, you're talking about hundreds of thousands of dollars for a vulnerability in, for instance, iOS. And if you look at what happens around, uh, well, now uh, in March 2004, this, this snake campaign came, came out. But it's, it's, I mean, it's a cyber espionage toolkit, and nothing new under the sun. Right? Um, yet another thing a la Metasploit, which is very, very important for also for, for, for people who do pen testing, also for people who do research, et cetera, et cetera. Again, now, in order to devise a Stuxnet, we don't need to have the millions of, euro, millions of dollars that were needed by, by the US agencies to develop and test it, and, and et cetera, et cetera. You just use a toolkit that, that cuts down the, de the development costs and gives some, some reasonable um, um, assurance that things will go right. And so what, what can we do about that? And that comes where, and that is the point that I'm, I'm, I'm puzzling with. And I'm, 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 despite the suit, I'm, I'm from origin um, a technical guy, and I still like to do technical research. And uh, the question is, Oops. How can we, why is my antivirus not detecting it? Hmm? Why is my intrusion detection system not detecting it? Can we devise an intrusion detection system that actually detects it? Um, so, uh, the, the answer is possibly yes, hmm? but let's, let's, let's see how we get to that answer. Hmm? So, um, this is the antivirus software we all know. It's based on very on, on, on stylish signatures. Uh, well, some, sometimes on heuristics, but basically on static signature. And, and this malware that we see in the advanced persistent threat in the targeted attacks is devised to avoid these signatures. I mean, the signatures have already a hard time with polymorphic code. But uh, if you use, especially a new, uh, a new vulnerability, uh, if you exploit a new vulnerability that has never been decoded, well, there's no signature in the world that will ever detect it. Huh? And okay, so we have to, do we have to move away from signature? Do we have to move away from, from, from that, 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 that way of detecting attacks? Well, uh, to some extent, yes. Huh? And let's see how, how we can detect an attack. Well, I thought until a couple of years ago that there were three ways of detecting an attack. Now I'm convinced that there are basically only two ways of detecting bad stuff going on in your, in your system. There are what I call, I'm, and I'm using, I'm using here a new word because I, want to, I don't want to talk about blacklisting, I don't want to talk about whitelisting, I don't want to talk about signatures. Um, you have things with a negative model, mechanism with a negative model, and you have mechanism with a positive model. Hmm? So, the negative, uh, so I call them rejection-based system and acceptance-based system. It's a, it's, a, it's a word I made up um, a few weeks ago just to make sure that I'm not confusing, uh, I'm not being confused with things that are already out there. Because if, for instance, if you talk about whitelisting, then you think about white application whitelisting, and then it's, it's broader than that. At certain base systems, you start only whitelisting. It's, it's, it's a whole bunch of, uh, uh, it's, it's, for instance, anomaly detection is also an acceptance based detection model. So the, the idea is either you have a model of what the bad guy does, 
or you have a model of what your system does. And you have a model of what the bad case does, and you recognize that there are some things uh, that make you think, hey, this thing is actually behaving like a bad guy. Well, then you raise an alert, or you block that altogether. So th that is a rejection-based model. So signatures, for instance, are, are a great example of a rejection-based model. You have a pattern, and when you see exactly that pattern, then you, you raise an alert. Only, as we have said, signatures it's, are very easily ev available with, with uh, um, polymorphic code, et cetera, et cetera. But the negative model does not have to be as naive as uh, signatures are. Uh, for instance, there are, uh, well, in, in research, and now we see also, also this coming out on, on, on in product, um, emulation-based intrusion detection system. Emulation-based intrusion detection system, some of them, not all of them, they work also on the negative model. For instance, and now I, I, I appeal on your, I, your more technical um, um, background. For instance, one thing that malware has to do is in order to be effective, is find out where, where he, he ended up in the memory of a computer. Right? To find out where he ended up in the memory of a computer, then he has to, 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 find, the, to find the program counter. And, and to find the program counter, what, you have this get PC um, uh, procedure, which you can do in different ways. Right? But if you find that a, a certain computer, a certain, a certain code, is, is trying to find out where the program counter is, where you have a, uh, you, you, using certain techniques, then you can, you can pretty, be pretty sure that this thing is malware. Another thing that malware does, for instance, is he needs to write code in a part that is writable, as data, and then at one point he needs to jump to that code. Huh? Needs to, well, there are ways to avoid this, but this is a normal thing that malware does. Those are, those are the so-called write-execute sequences. Huh? You write some, some part of the code, you jump to that. Well, if you see that this is happening, well, you're pretty sure that that thing is not doing well to your system. Huh? So this is still, these are still things based on negative models. Hmm? Because you recognize a behavior that is not that is typical behavior of malware. The problem is, and 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 this is this is at, high, at much higher level than a signature. I mean, a signature detects a specific instance of malware using a specific vulnerability. Uh, higher level uh, rejection-based system, well, they have mechanisms that encompass more. Uh, more types of attacks. So it's not true that with a rejection-based system, there's no way that you detect a zero-day attack. You can still detect a zero-day attack. You can still detect a, um, uh, an attack using a zero-day vulnerability, only you have to use a rejection-based system that works at a much higher level than the system you, are, you, are now, uh, you, you have now. These systems are coming out, and they have some, 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 some other specificity that we, we can discuss a little bit uh, afterwards. Then the other, the other things are the acceptance-based system. The acceptance-based system, you, when do you have an acceptance-based system? When the system knows that you, when, 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 when the, the, the tool you use has a good idea what your system does. And has good ideas of what your system does, either because you told him, like with a firewall. You told him exactly which ports open, which ports close, et cetera, et cetera. Or because you learned it, like in anomaly detection system. Or because there's a, white, there's a prefabricated whitelist. For instance, uh, you, 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 no, whitelisting systems now have prefabricated whitelist of applications you can, you can download and use on your, on your, on your, on your, on your systems. Well, with some, um, with some I'm, I'm talking a little bit more about future than, than present system now. So. 
before, in, until a few years ago, I thought, until a few months ago, I, I thought that there was a, th a third possibility. Hmm? And that is that by putting, putting things in a sandbox, you could actually see uh, whether this was malware or not. Well, yes, it is true that you can actually see whether this is malware or not, but you either do, so, you either do it rejection-based because you recognize the behavior of the malware, or you do it acceptance-based because you recognize what your system is supposed to do. So basically, yes, you have a question? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, uh, for instance, if you look at a, um, a web application firewall, just to use to, to mention something very simple, huh? web application firewall has some whitelisting things so that you can you can um, whitelist the protocol that you use uh, that you, uh, anomalies in the protocol are detected because because it's a septum based part, partly a septum based, and then it starts triggering when you have like it sees the string union. In, uh, in, uh, so it's, it's a mix of these two things. But uh, if you want to understand, what I'm saying here is if you want to understand how effective your system is, how effective is the, 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 the countermeasures you're taking, well, you have to think what is the rejection-based component and how, at which, at which, at which um, uh, accuracy level works the rejection-based part, and you have to look at what is the acceptance-based component. You'd have to actually split this in two, and you look. You have to look at how these two components work and how accurate they are, huh? because if 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 well, let me um, let me first go on with uh, with uh, with this, and then I'll I'll. Uh, I'll jump to confusion later. Huh? So rejection-based system, but typically, I mean, the, the simple ones are uh, the signature-based system, signature-based intrusion detection system, antiviruses, et cetera, et cetera. Huh? And their problem is that they have false positives. Uh, sorry, uh, they have false negatives. So th there's an attack, uh, and it just avoids all all the countermeasures you put in place. Eh? They, they know where, where these, these holes are and you just, they just go across them. Eh? And uh, there is some hope in the future because, because of this getting to a higher level of description of malware. For instance, if you look at Anubis and Argos, uh, they, they do a very, very good job in detecting malware. Only they are very specific for a certain system. So for a system, Windows system, for Android, et cetera, et cetera. So you, you, you lose in genericity, which is the great things of, in, of, of signature-based system. I mean, you can just put them there and forget about that. Huh? And you, but turn, uh, but giving away a little bit of genericity for a specificity, then you get something, something back in return that, that, that seems to work well. I would like to test it in practice before I'm, I'm convinced 100%. Huh? And then, of course, you have, you have the problem of signature maintenance. Eh? If it is about malware, then they are, they, you can have this higher level, this higher level uh, signatures. But for lower level things, when you're not talking about malware, when you're talking about simply disruption of a system, which you don't need a malware for, then you want to have the signatures. And your signatures need to be maintained. And to be maintained, you need to have honeypots, you need to have mechanisms there that find out what the attacks are. And you don't have this for non-mainstream system, for instance, SCADA system. So, and what is the downside of acceptance-based systems? Well, acceptance-based systems depend on the system they're on. So if your system, if, if your natural traffic looks like this, there's no way you can detect attacks using an acceptance-based system. It's a mess. They work very, very well when, you're, when, when you can focus on a part of the network traffic, on a crucial part of the network traffic, which is much, much more ordered. Huh? You can, if, if, you, if, you, if you, I mean, also whitelisting application, it works when you don't change the applications every day. If you change the application every day, there's no way you can do whitelisting there. One beautiful place where to, be, to do whitelisting, for instance, would be the outgoing traffic of the computer. That's where you catch the, 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 the communication with command, command and control system. It's such a mess that that's basically impossible. And that's why you do it the other way around. You blacklist the, the IP address of the command and control systems. 
even though there, there we, have a, we have just found out something that might be interesting in, in finding out uh, the, the, the ROG uh, SSL, um, SSL things. So it's not a septum based system. They work beautifully. They're usually a pain in the neck, but they work, they don't work always. You have to always watch out what am I, what, what am I defending now? And if we look at what can we catch, well, to, to, to go to, to, to the conclusion part, basically, uh, it looks very much that a certain-based system uh, work on this part, while rejection-based system work on that part, even though research is showing that rejection-based system are moving in this direction. An interesting question is, will it ever be possible to find rejection-based system that actually cover the whole spectrum. I think not. But even though uh, it's, it's, not, it's, not, it's not a reason for throwing them away, they're still the system that were the best at this, stage, at this stage. So a very, 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 very superficial comparison here because, again, one should look at the specific system and especially the level of, of abstraction of, of the analysis of that the system does because you cannot compare uh, application whitelisting, which is very accurate, with anomaly detection, which is very fluffy. Huh? And even though they are both acceptance-based systems, actually. Hmm? So, um, but 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 if I don't if I don't if I don't write some uh, if I don't draw some conclusion, then then you're going to hate me, and uh, and I can I can still talk for hours and hours and hours. A professor are very good at talking for hours and hours and hours. Uh, and, and, and still leave you with, <laughs> with more questions than answers. <laughs> and, uh, but yes, okay, this is a very superficial comparison. You have in rejection-based system, the nice thing, the beautiful thing of rejection-based system is low false positive rate, usually out of the box. And when they detect something, they, they tell you what it is. Hey, I got this kind of malware. Or I got this process is malware. Huh? Uh, it's... They are typically, in effect, I guess, high end attack, even though this is improving in, in new emulation based systems. And they are, if you don't look at malware, they are typically, in effect, in non, -base, non mainstream context. And that's because they need signatures and needs signatures, need the whole process, et cetera, et cetera. So a septum base, and a septum base, I mean, I'm, I'm, it really, I, it, it's, it's painful for me to write down conclusion on a septum based system because the, the spectrum of a septum based system is so incredibly broad at this moment. The, the worst is still need to settle about that. I mean, you have, again, flow-based system and, and whitelisting. It's too, too broad to, to draw conclusion. But if I don't draw conclusion, then uh, I don't get the bottle of wine. So um, it, it's, it, they are made in such a, well, they're supposed to catch high-end attacks, and they can. Huh? And they can, especially if you do things with specific tools. Like if you look at, uh, at the Tofino firewall for, uh, for SCADA system, well, it can block an attack on, on, on your PLC. Only then, and, don't, and then you say, yeah, but I'm spending all my all two people in configuring the system. Like, that's a different story. It can block an attack on your PLC. Huh? Huh? And it can be in effect in non-mainstream context because you customize it for that context. You don't need to know the attack for that context. You need to know the context, and you know that. It's, they are often, and here I'm very, uh, very, they're often complex and expensive to use. Why expensive to use? Well, because you, they need to be configured on the context. Well, that's sometimes expensive, sometimes not expensive because sometimes they learn it. Huh? Uh, why, why does the, the, the expense come from? The expense come from that an acceptance based system tells you, hey, there's something strange. It doesn't tell you what it is, by definition. Hmm? And it's very difficult to, one, one of the, the research questions, the research problems in a acceptance-based system is, given the anomaly, explain to the user what it is. Hmm? And that's, that's, I mean, uh, for instance, imagine a flow-based anomaly detection system. You see a, a peak in the, in, the, in, the, in the flow. What is that? Someone has to start investigating. In that sense, it's expensive. You need someone that, that is able to do this. And um, 
And the environment matters. Forget about doing uh, whitelisting on everything. It will cost you much more than just throwing away the system and not doing anything. Um, and some, thing, some places are simply too, ex too, too complicated for, do an for doing anomaly detection, too complicated for doing whitelisting. Hmm? So that's my, I'm, I'm working on this. Uh, next year I might be able to tell you something more about, <laughs> about uh, the comparison between these, these different approaches. Um, I finished my half hours, I'm ready for questions. No, I see one here, one there. Oh, that's a good, uh, that's, yes, 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 yes. That's, uh, that's, that's indeed one of the things, uh, but that's, that's one of the things that we were, um, uh, that we were trying to do. Um, and, and I think to some extent it's, it, it is being done. I mean, the emulation-based system, what, what they do, uh, they, um, uh, when they see something strange, Emulation-based network intrusion system. When they see something strange on the network, then they, they put it in an emulator, which is basically a honeypot. Yeah? Uh, the point is how much this this emulator. One of the points is how this wo this emulator works on on a rejection base on a septum base. He can work on a septum base that would be much more effective if he has, for instance, the exact memory uh, map of of the system the the, 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 the attack is going to. Yeah. That, that would be excellent, but that's often unfeasible. Huh? So in Hammer case, that would be something like FireEye? FireEye, uh, yes. Okay, there, 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 there's not only FireEye. Um, I, and I must say, I, I know how the research papers work, and I don't know how FireEye work, works. I need, to, uh, I need to make a guess there. I, I would love to have to have a good test at that, uh, because I, my 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 feeling is that there's a lot of of rich. Oh, let me jump to uh, to another thing. We we just uh, we are just coming up at, uh, with an article in RAID, in which we have looked at uh, at emulation-based network intrusion detection systems, the theory. Now, they, they are based on a three-stage part. One is the, the, the coding, then uh, the emulation, and then the, uh, the heuristic signatures. But they have heuristic signatures which are, which are rejection-based. And actually, my, my PhD was very, it was very easy for him to, find, to define scripts, saying, okay, if you, if you use this script, then you avoid all the detection. Huh? I don't know how FIRE works. Uh, if it is rejection based, I, 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 th I think. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I, want, I would like to know how it runs. That is the, that is a crucial thing. How, how, because in, in letting it run, you have to take some, uh, some, you have to make some compromise. You cannot follow all the path of a certain code. Okay, the speed of the clock cycle, but still, there are, there, 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 you know, I, I would like to see the, I would like to see the inside mechanism, and the lot don't let me see it. Uh, and, and I mean, you can you can speed it up. You can you can you can do a lot of things. But at one point, there should be. If you use a rejection, if you use a, a, an acceptance-based system that you know exactly what your so, so computer is supposed to do, and you see a difference, huh? like this system call should never be used, and you see that system call, then you can say, okay, this is malware. But if you if you look at the mechanism, the malware mechanism, like the, the get POC, the the write execute, etc., etc., you can avoid them. 
And of course, it's, you, it's, I'm not saying you should throw it away. I mean, it's, it works much, 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 much better than any signature-based system. Huh? But it's also specific for malware. And malware is not the only thing that, work, that, that, that you're afraid of. Huh? So you, you, there's, there's always a trade-off in there. Yeah. Yeah, and you can have a predefined whitelisting. So that, 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 that uh, speeds up, the, the, that makes it, uh, the system much more effective and not very costly. There's, there's, I, I'm not saying it doesn't make sense. It makes a lot of sense, and it's fantastic. Only as research, as researcher, I'm interested. At, I'm interested in what are the limits of that technology. Yeah, um, what, how, how, and and uh, it's the best we have now for some things. Absolutely, no questions about that. Yeah? But what is going to happen next? And and about the detecting uh, malware in PDF files. Well, we we could have a discussion another time.